Hello, I'm Dr. Daniel Griffin. And I'm Dixon Dupont. And today we will be discussing sepsis. So we move from the ridiculous to the sublime. <laughs> this has some serious implications just in the word itself. You know, I always say that I don't like sepsis. I don't blame you. And, there, and there's several reasons why I don't like sepsis. Um, part of it is that the, the concept of sepsis is an approach to capture the people who are most likely to die, the right. people who are the most ill. That's true. Um, the other reason I don't like sepsis is that over time we've tried to make sure we don't miss anyone, and in a sense we've started to apply this a little too, too broadly, too generously. Ah. Um, but that's okay. Um, we're going to work through this. We're going we're to talk about what sepsis is, what are the criteria, and then we're going to try to get a handle on even among the many people that we recognize as or define right. as having sepsis, who should we worry most about? Okay. So let's start off with just some definitions. So sepsis is um, the presence of a severe or systemic inflammatory response syndrome with the idea that this is brought on by an infection. So SEERS, that's our S-I-R-S, -S. So we have SEERS criteria, but then we wanna make a suggestion that we think or we have proof or evidence that this SEERS is being prompted by an infectious process. So who gets sepsis? Anyone at any age. Oh, and so we're gonna have- That narrows it down quite a bit. <laughs> anyone at any age. And both sexes, by the way. And we're gonna have, and because of that, we're gonna have SEERS criteria for children. Wow and Sears criteria for adults. Wow. And let's, let's run through these a little. Just, sure. These are definitions. And, and right now, those of you who are watching will be seeing we have created a nice table where we outline these. Those of you listening, though, let me, let me go through these so that we have um, these understood. For children, we break it down by age into various age categories. And what we're looking at in children is heart rate being above or below a certain level respiratory rate being above a certain level. We might look at white blood cell counts. And this is, again, going to be either above a certain level and they're really young or above or below a certain level as the, as the child is a little bit older. And then systolic blood pressure. So we're going to have four criteria. And if you have two or more of these criteria, then the child would be classified as having Sears. And then we would make a clinical decision about whether or not we thought it was prompted by infection. Adults, you're gonna have four, but these are gonna be slightly different criteria. You're gonna have temperature. Right. You're gonna have heart rate, respiratory rate, and white blood cell counts. Right. And to point out the difference is you don't see blood pressure used in the adult criteria for Sears, but you don't see temperature used in the child criteria oh, for right. Sears. Sure. So they're a little different. Sure. Of course. So what causes sepsis? Well, we believe it's not the infectious agent itself, but the body's response, the immune system's okay. response. Okay. So it suggests that there's something to do about it. Yes, yes. Whether um, you do I, that or not, that's another yeah. question. Well, I, I want to say it's um, what we're trying to identify with the concept of sepsis and Sears is the patient who require the most attention Got it. and the most careful management. Are these the ones that are always triaged into the emergency room? Well, maybe even triaged for admission, maybe even triaged into the intensive care unit. So they get first choice no matter what? Um, unless you're in the military, right? In the military, exactly. <laughs> we want people that can return to the battlefield. In general medical care, we want people who are the most severe to have the most resources um, targeted. Yes. Right. And so in addition to determining whether or not someone has sepsis, serious criteria, we may also look at severity. We may look at severity of sepsis as well. And so they're starting to have organ dysfunction. They're no longer making urine. Like renal shutdown. So it's renal like, shutdown. Yeah, they're no longer thinking very clearly. So okay. they're not perfusing the brain adequately. Okay. Um, some of their blood tests, you may see bilirubin rising, you may see liver dysfunction. So one of the things that starts to classify the severity of our sepsis is evidence of end organ dysfunction. Wow. A lot of things come to mind when I think about that because, well, as I 
have told you again and again, I am a parasitology specialist. So when I think about someone in those kinds of situations, I'm thinking about acute onset malaria. Is yes. that considered to be a sepsis? So severe or complicated malaria will often present with or as sepsis. Okay. So you even put that into that. Yeah. So Ebola outbreaks and... Um, they would present us as sepsis. Loss of fever, any acute infection like rabies, for instance. Rabies, unfortunately, would also. So, yeah. and what about bacterial infections, common bacterial infections? Probably the number one up there with malaria, number one causes of people to be classified as sepsis, to be at risk of death. Right, and the kinds of bacteria? So it'll be, um, it'll be a lot of gram negatives. Okay. So a lot of people with urinary tract infections, right. pyelonephritis, mm -hmm. the bacteria may get into the system. Typhoid? Um, typhoid can certainly present this way, sure. particularly if they have typhoid and they have a perforation. Got it. And now they've got bacteria from the gut getting into the system. Got it. Um, and the concept of sepsis is the idea that someone is so sick that you jump in and start broad management before you may start taking the time to think about specific etiologies. And so that's an interesting, just wow. sort of, I want to be careful how we say that because you're always thinking about what it may be, but with sepsis, your margin for error is so small that you may be treating for many of the possibilities wow. because you don't want to be wrong. Sure. You don't want to fail to treat. That's exactly right. So we call some of these organisms um, uh, acute infections when they elicit uh, a storm of cytokines. I've heard that being used by physicians a lot. Yes. That patient yes. suffered from an overreaction due to a storm of cytokines being released, which activates lots of different portions of the immune system unnecessarily, that is to say, without effect, but nonetheless, that's the way the biology is, is, is selected for, because in some mm -hmm. circumstances that works, but in overwhelming bacterial or viral infections, perhaps it doesn't work. And so do you deal with the cytokine storm rather than the bacteria or virus itself? It's actually interesting. Um, the, the idea is initially there's an over exuberant inflammatory response. So cytokines, proteins that are being produced. Right. This then follows by a dysfunction of the immune system. Sure. So there's, there's stages of sepsis. Right. Um, one of the things that the over exuberant immune system can create is drop in blood pressure very high temperatures, sure, of course. Um, mismatch in perfusion relative to demand. Wow. So you are trying to, if possible, get rid of the trigger. And how are we going to do that? So let's, let's talk about it. <laughs> right. and, this is, and that's one of the things. With sepsis, you go very quickly from the diagnosis. They've met the criteria. You think there's an infection involved. Um, and then you say, well, let's keep them alive so we have enough time to figure out What's specific called? therapy. And so we talk about an initial A, B, C, D, E, and G approach. <laughs> I was very young when I learned that. <laughs> I didn't know what the A, B, C, and D stood for. <laughs> and we just skipped right past F, didn't we? Uh, we did. <laughs> so one of the first things um, we want to assess is the airway and the oxygenation. So we want to make sure that the person is getting adequate oxygen um, into their system. So adequate oxygenation of the blood. Um, the next we want to look at breathing. So That's this B. is B. So airway, right. breathing, C for circulation. Okay. And we may be trying to establish intravenous access early. These are these are our sick patients. These are we're going to be throwing resources at them. Also. You want to often establish the um, intravenous access early before the severity gets such that it's more challenging and not possible. Um, the next thing, D for disability. Uh -huh. And I mentioned the person being obtunded, the mentation not clear. Uh, the person may not be giving you much of a history. Um, and also because their level of consciousness may be decreased, they become at risk of aspirating, having other problems. Sure, of course. Our E, and this is interesting, exposure. And this, there's a lot of things that we throw in under, under exposure. Huh. Um, one is you want to look for bleeding. You're looking for non-infectious, even though we've talked about this being sepsis. You also want to um, look at their temperature. 
is this someone who's cold? Are they hypothermic? Are they oh, hyperthermic? Okay. Do you need to wrap them in a blanket? Okay. Um, particularly a small child with a body surface relative to volume is so um, significant. And G, and this is, this is a little pearl, glucose. Hypoglycemia okay. is a significant and frequent problem, particularly in, as you mentioned, malaria. Yes. One of the reasons why you may be having so many problems, why you may be having decrease in consciousness with or without treatment is glucose levels. So there's a, a whole sort of rapid jump in. Sure. So, I mean, I'm playing house right now, Dr. House, <laughs> for all of those that don't know who that is. It's a very appropriate television physician. So when, I, when you just mentioned low glucose, mm -hmm. what is the first thing you think came to my mind? Diabetic shock, which is not sepsis, mm -hmm. but it might resemble sepsis. That is so true. a patient that's brought in by emergency, by ambulance, let's say, for instance, mm -hmm. they have no medical history. In fact, they may not even have a name. Mm -hmm. They're brought in off the street unconscious. What is your... So that would be... You've got four criteria, yeah. but you can't ask them any questions because they're yeah. already unconscious. Yeah, and as, you, as we go through these <clears throat> six things, the glucose is one of the things you're going to be checking. Absolutely. And, and, you know, we always talk about limited resources, but there's certain resources you want to have. And one of them is the it's ability to do a glucose level. That's right. And that might cost a dollar. And that actually can be a significant resource when you start adding it up. I know sometimes I've done diabetic care in, in places where the test strips, the test strips don't match the machines, having test strips, having machines with batteries, having oh, machines yeah. that work. Oh, yeah. But in sepsis, this is going to be a situation where if you don't have some resources to bring to the table, this is where patients will be dying. Yeah. yeah. So this is a, one of the high mortality areas that you're going to run into. Wow. Um, one of the things that I think we'll throw in in circulation is volume. One of the first things that we do, even before we get to our medicines to raise blood pressure, our pressors, our intensive care unit type uh, medicines, volume. Giving a person volume can, can be significant and potentially life-saving. So IV fluids? Intravenous fluids. With glucose? Um, if, they're usually, low, yeah, if they're low. Yeah, usually with glucose. Um, and then we usually recommend broad spectrum antibiotics until we know otherwise. I got it. And what we've seen, and, and I always say in the middle of the night, if I get a call, we've got someone, they're septic. Um, can I get approval to give this antibiotic? And I always say, yes, you can, Absolutely. whatever you want to give right away so that we have time to start thinking it through. Right. And broad spectrum antibiotics are different in different parts of the world. I'm sure. And so in much of the world, when we say broad spectrum antibiotics, we're talking about ceftriaxone. And when we're worried about maybe a meningitis because the patient can't tell us Good because idea. their sure. decreased yes. level, we're gonna be using a higher dose ceftriaxone. Yeah. Wow. Um, sometimes if we're thinking about other things, we might add second drugs too. Or in the case of malaria. <laughs> or in the case of malaria. <laughs> one of the first things we'll want to be doing is addressing, is it malaria? Right. Because that's, again, something you don't want to delay treatment. Right. Um, we say quinidine, but thankfully, as of <clears throat> April 2019, the United States is joining the rest of the world. And oh, it's now cool. going to be IV artesanate. Really? Yeah, so artemisin-derived therapies. And that's going to be universal. And that may be actually in your area, that may be part of your sepsis protocol if there's delay in getting a blood smear, if sure. there's delay in a rapid yes. malaria yes. test. Yes. Yes. So adjust a little bit. Our recommendations are broad, jump in, keep the person alive, be very broad in your antimicrobial coverage until you know better. In some areas of the world, they're even throwing antifungals in right up front. Um, Serious topic. Too bad we can't give you more details. Yeah. Well, thank you for joining us for this serious topic. Um, and please look through the criteria. A lot of these, I think particularly for children, you're going to have to probably reference the table unless you have a better memory than I do. <laughs> and I think the big lesson is um, the diagnosis can wait with sepsis. You want to jump in. You want to keep the person alive. Broad spectrum antimicrobials. And then you can always narrow and specific therapy later. Great.
All right. Thank you for joining us. Yep. See you again.